In this video, I want to do a more complicated example with pulleys for more practice with Newton's second law in one dimension. Remember, Newton's second law tells us the vector sum of all the forces on one object is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object. So I've got a couple pulleys and a couple masses here. They can give you a mechanical advantage in lifting heavy objects. In fact, that's why they're used. So in this particular configuration of masses and pulleys, what are the accelerations of the objects, assuming that we know the masses? Well, I want to apply Newton's law to this problem. And so the first thing I have to do is choose one object. So I'll start with the mass of A. I'll isolate it by drawing a line around it. And I need to identify the forces. There are only two forces on mass of A. It's attached to one string, so there's a tension force. And then there's the force due to gravity. I want to sum the forces, so I'll start with a free body diagram. I represent the object by a point. My forces are pointing in the appropriate direction with their tails at that point. I have the tension force, which is directed upward, and the force of gravity, which is downward. I must have a coordinate system for my free body diagram, and so I've identified the positive direction to be up. Now I want to find the vector sum of my forces. So I've just written the vectors out. There's a tension force. It has a magnitude of t. It's pointing in the positive x direction. I have the force due to gravity. It has a magnitude of the mass of A times the acceleration due to gravity, and it's pointing in the negative x direction. So the sum of these is equal to the mass of that one object, the mass of A, times the acceleration of that object, acceleration of A. I've specified those individually by giving them subscripts A. The acceleration is also a vector. Mass times A, then, is has a magnitude of the mass of A times the acceleration of A, and it is in some direction that I don't know yet. Given my notation for vectors in one dimension, I can extract a relationship between scalar quantities from the vectors, where the sign indicates the direction the vector is pointing. So I have a positive t minus the force due to gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So is this enough? Well, I know the masses, I know g, but I don't know the tension, and I don't know the acceleration of A. So I need more information. And so I'm going to do Newton's second law on the other object. So I've zoomed in on my picture, and I've isolated my second object. I have the pulley, which is massless by itself, but I've included it as part of my object B. This all moves together. What I know is that the tension everywhere in this string is T. So the tension in the string in this part is t, the tension in the string, this part of the string is t, and the tension in that part of the string is t. And so I want to be able to use that knowledge in my Newton's law. I'm going to include as the object under analysis, the object encircled by the purple line. And if it's not clear, I can do that because this additional pulley piece doesn't move relative to the mass, and it doesn't add any mass of its own. So now I want to un understand the forces, and there are in fact three separate forces acting on the object. There's a force due to gravity, and there are two separate tensions. Remember, every string that crosses the line that encircles your object is a force according to our tension model. So there are two of them, and they each have a magnitude t, and they both point up. Start to sum my forces by drawing a free body diagram. I represent my object as a point, and my forces point away. So now I have two tension forces both pointing up. I've in indicated them by 2t, and then I have the force of gravity which is acting down. I've written them out in vector form. I have the two tension forces, each with a magnitude of t, and they point in the positive x direction, given my coordinate system, and the force due to gravity, which is equal to the mass of block B times the acceleration due to gravity, and it's pointing in the negative x direction. The sum of all these forces, then, is equal to the mass of that one object, B, times the acceleration of that one object, A sub B, which is a vector. It has a magnitude of the mass of B times the magnitude of the acceleration of B, and it is pointing in a direction that I don't know yet. Now I can have, I translate this into a scalar relationship, and I add it to the one I had before. Here I've translated from vector to the scalar using my one-dimensional vector notation. 
where the sign indicates the direction of the vector. So I have two equations, but I still have three unknowns. What is the relationship between the acceleration of A and the acceleration of B? So I've blown up my pulley picture again. Imagine mass A is falling. In a very small period of time, dt, it falls in amount dx. That means this length of string will increase an amount dx. Well, if that increases an amount dx, that means the string on the other side of this first pulley must shorten by an amount dx. And for mass b to move up and to stay moving parallel, half of that has to come from each of the strings attached to it. So if it moves up by an amount dx over 2 when mass a falls by an amount dx. How does a small movement of mass A relate to a small movement of mass B. So remember, I gave both systems a coordinate system where positive was up. If mass A falls an amount dx sub A, that means it changes by a negative amount. It's going in the negative x direction. Mass B is going to move up twice that amount. If mass A moves down an amount dx sub A, mass B will move up half that amount which means dx sub a is twice the amount dx sub b. And if mass a is going in the negative x direction, down, then mass b will be going up in the positive x direction. So this is the relationship between the movement of a and the movement of b. Now if this takes place during the same period of time dt, I can divide both sides by dt, and I have two ratios of differentials. And assuming my functions are well behaved, then this is equal to the derivatives of both of these quantities. Well, the velocity of A, which is in the negative direction, will be twice the velocity of B, which will be in the positive direction. And now I can differentiate this again, and I have a relationship between the accelerations. The negative acceleration of A is equal to twice the acceleration of B or the acceleration of A is equal to negative 2 times the acceleration of B. So notice again, there's no equation really that will give us this relationship. But we have to go and extract that logically from the context of the problem that depends on the system itself as well as how you established your coordinate systems. We can go ahead and solve. The first thing I'm going to do is take this equation and multiply it by 2. I'm going to take this equation and substitute in for the acceleration of b. The acceleration of b is negative one-half the acceleration of a. Given these two equations, I'm going to subtract them. By subtracting them, the 2t goes away, and I get the mass of b times g minus twice the mass of a times g, plus this, com this combination of masses times the acceleration of A. I've already pulled out the acceleration of A from the two terms. And now I can go ahead and solve by dividing both sides by the term in front of the acceleration for A. And notice I've also factored out the acceleration due to gravity G. Notice how I've written it in this form. G is an acceleration, A is an acceleration. I have essentially the acceleration, which is some factor dimensionless factor that depends on all the masses times the acceleration due to gravity. Finally, we want to check to see if this makes sense. Both masses are in the denominator, and so if either goes up, the acceleration is going to go down. What does this mean? If mass B is more than twice mass A, the acceleration of A will be positive. Remember that I had identified the positive to be up. So that means mass B has to be more than twice mass of A for mass B to fall to lift mass A. And that makes sense because the pulley is on mass B and so it is mass A has the leverage over mass B. So mass B must have twice the mass to be able to fall and lift mass A.